everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with dave kelly on today's episode i'm going to show you how i edited this flower image here and got this final result uh this is a series of tutorials where i actually show you my workflow so you can actually see all the steps that i'm doing and you know every image varies from image to image as to what things i'll use on the images and whatever they uh, call for that's what i'm going to use and i think you can learn a lot just by watching me edit images okay so i hope you're enjoying this series so Without any further ado, let's get started. All right, here's our image. Uh, it's a camera raw image. I shot this on a Canon uh, 40D ISO 800. It was a 60 millimeter macro lens shot at f2.8. And I like that, uh, that depth of field because it gives me a nice bokeh background. Uh, mainly interested in the front of the flower being in sharp focus here. Don't like this petal this piece of a flower down here so we're going to get rid of that but let's go ahead and crop this so let's click on the crop tool here and let's choose the 4x5 8x10 crop and i'm going to type the x key just to change that to the uh, portrait mode i'm going to turn my lights out by typing the l key twice and then just kind of move my image into the frame here see where i want this and i think I think I really like this centered here. I think that looks pretty nice. Let me see if I want to get rid of some space at the top. Maybe just a little bit here. And I know I'm cropping into the image a good bit here, but I always have uh, Topaz Gigapixel AI if I really wanted to print this big, which would be fine. So I'm really happy with this. And so that's going to be my crop. So I'm just going to type the return key. And there's my cropped image. Type the L key to bring the lights back on. And let's take a look at uh, some uh, profiles here. Let's try Adobe Color. That looks pretty nice. And try Adobe Vivid. That's looking pretty good too. I might go for Color. Let's try Standard, which is not bad either. You know what? I think I'm just gonna start out with Standard because there's a lot of yellow in here. There's a lot of saturation. Let's try the Auto Adjustment here. Oh, I hate the auto adjustment. Okay, so I'm going to type Command Z to get rid of the auto adjustment. That usually works out pretty nice, but in this case, I don't like it. I didn't think it looks too good. This image is looking pretty good. Let me just pull the highlights back a little bit. I like the straight out of camera. I think it looks really nice. Maybe uh, let's watch our histogram up here. Let's open up the exposure a little bit. Don't want to go too crazy here. But And I'm watching that histogram up there. Maybe right around there. Maybe just pull my highlights back just a little bit, just so we don't clip any highlights. Let's see what happens if we open up the shadows. I like the open airiness of this image, so I'm going to open up those shadows a little bit here. Not going to play with any contrast yet. I'm going to come down to detail just to show you. I have the default sharpening setting at 25, uh, and that's what Lightroom is defaulted at. I'm not going to apply any noise reduction. Again, this is ISO 800, so there's not a ton of noise in here. And let's go down to lens corrections and I have remove chromatic aberrations checked and enable uh, profile correction. So I'm good there. And I'm not going to do too much else here. I like the histogram here. Um, the white and black point looks good. And I'm not going to add any clarity at this time. I'll do that in Photoshop if I need it. And I'll mainly add some clarity or sharpness right around in this area right here. So all we need to do now is right click this and edit in Photoshop 2020. And then we'll get started. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this flower down here. So I'm going to type the L key to get the lasso tool. I'm going to use uh, content aware fill in Photoshop. So I'm just going to, you know, make a loose selection around this flower right here. And I'm going to use my Tony Kuiper Action CAF Content Aware Fill. Give that a click, and here we are. Now, all I need to do is, um, I'm in the uh, custom mode here. I like to use the custom mode because I like to tell Photoshop what I want it to sample from. And so I'm going to tell it to sample from, like there's that stem right there. I'm going to say sample like from around this area right here. And you'll watch things change over here as I do that. And look at that. That did a beautiful job. Now we can come and do some different things here. Like we can come to color adaptation and change some things up here. But you know what? It looks really good. So I'm not going to even touch that. Uh, and we can output this to the current layer. Or in this case, I want to put it on a duplicate layer. 
and say OK. Just give that a click, and here we are. Now my uh, selection is still there, so Command or Control D to get rid of the selection, and that did a beautiful job. Excellent. I love this picture. I think it's simple. I love how this uh, one bloom here or this flower here is, you know, just it looks like this flower is embracing it. And I think that looks really awesome. And that's what really strikes me about this picture. I like this little bit of yellow up in here. And I just like that soft bokeh background, which the macro lens gave me at f2.8. So that's really cool. Let's zoom into this image and see what the noise level looks like. So it was ISO 800 on a Canon 40D. Not a great camera for eliminating, you know, for having a real low noise, a real low noise footprint, but it's not bad. There's not a whole lot of noise in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this into Sharpen AI. And because that does noise reduction as well. So I'm going to skip the denoise step. So I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate this background layer, Command J. So I can work non-destructively and let's go to filter and Topaz Labs, sharpen AI. And I think I'll just add, just do the default auto sharpening on here. Let's zoom into 200%, take a look at this. And as you can see, the noise is gone and that little bit of sharpening there looks good. So let's click on the original. There's the original and there's after the sharpening and the denoising that uh, Sharpen AI does. And it does a great job. And that's all I really need. So I'm just going, going to click Apply. And that'll bring us back into Photoshop. Okay, let's duplicate this background layer. Command or Control J. And let's come up to Filter and open up Topaz Studio 2. One of my favorite plugins, as you all know. And I'm thinking in here, we're just going to add a little bit of detail to this section of the flower right in here. And just to draw your attention into it. So let's go to Add Filter. And I think I'm going to use, I'm going to try this first, Precision de precision Contrast, sorry, to, to do that. Now let's just take the Micro Contrast and boost that up a ways here. And let me see what the uh, Low Contrast does. Maybe a little bit of the Low in there. And how about the Medium? Maybe just a slight amount of medium, and let's look at the high. Sometimes I'll pull the high up, but a lot of times I'll pull the high back. Let me just pull the high back a little bit. See that? It brings out some, I don't know, it opens up these shadows in some way right there, which I think looks pretty nice. Let's click on the canvas here. Here's a before, and here's the after. See, just a little bit more detail in here. And I'm just going to use a layer mask in Photoshop and paint this on. So let's go ahead and accept this. And I'll put a hide all layer mask on here. I'm going to use my Tony Kuiper action to do that. Just to introduce everyone to the Tony Kuiper actions. They're awesome. See this little icon right here? This will put a black layer mask right there. And now I'm just going to get my brush. B for the brush tool. And a fairly big brush that's very soft. And let's see. The opacity is 100%. I think I'm going to paint it 100%. Make sure you have white paint. If you don't, type X. And I'm just going to paint that detail or that contrast, which is adding detail to this section right here. All right. Now let's uh, click this eyeball here. So here's the before and there's the after. But see, it just draws some attention in there. And if you feel you went too far, as always, you can pull this opacity back a little bit if you think you just overstepped it a little bit there. I'd rather uh, add a little too much in a, on a, in a plug-in and then take it off with the opacity in Photoshop. So... I like that. I think that's looking really nice. The next thing I want to do is just pull this yellow tone back a little bit. The saturation's a little bit too hot for me. So I want to pull this image all together onto a new layer and that shift option, command or control E, or I can use my Tony Kuiper action. And again, like I said, I'm introducing you to the Tony Kuiper actions. This little icon right here, one click and it does it. It really saves you a lot of time. So now let's, uh, there's even an action to go into the camera raw filter. I'm going into the camera raw filter. I can um, come up here to filter and click on camera raw filter. But the action is right, uh, where is that action at? ACR right here. So I'm just going to click this and it'll take me right into the Adobe Camera Raw Filter, which is really nice. Now I want to come to this icon right here, which is the HSL adjustments. Make sure you're on saturation. And uh, I just want to pull the yellows back a little bit. Maybe like to like about a minus five. 
or a minus six, maybe like a minus six on the saturation. I want to take my orange tones and maybe bring those up a little bit. I'm looking at this portion of the flower right in here. So let me just give that a little more saturation. Yeah, just a little bit of extra saturation in there. And maybe the red tones, let's pull those up a little bit. A little more saturation in the red tones there. Yeah. And let me just look at my yellows again. Do I just want to? Yeah, I'm going to go to like a minus eight. I think that looks good. And click OK, and we'll be right back into Photoshop. Now, I like this little bit of yellow up in here, and I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could simulate like some light coming down, striking my little flower, like spotlighting it? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to sample this area of the flower right here, this color right in here. I'm going to, I'm on my brush tool, and if you're not, type B for the brush tool. But option click, like maybe right around in here, this color right here. And that sets it on this swatch here. And then come to your adjustment layers and come to gradient and your gradient will pick this color right here and right now uh, the gradient is on linear so change that to radial and then you'll have a move tool here and you can just click and and drag this up with your mouse I'm just gonna drag it up maybe in an area like this kind of like spotlight that flower I just want the light to start to kiss the top of that flower right there maybe somewhere right around in there and click OK. Now let's change the blend mode from normal to screen so that'll lighten things up. And see how that puts a nice little light coming down in there. And I, I do this a lot with my flower images and I think that really helps out a lot and I think that looks beautiful. But if it's a little too strong, we can just take the opacity and let's just see if we can just back it off just a little bit. I just want that little kiss of light in there. Here's uh, the before and here's the after. Isn't that nice? It just, to me, adds a nice little, I don't know, a little bit of uh, style to the image, and I think it looks really okay, nice. Okay, we're on the gradient fill layer, so let's hold our shift key down and click on the uh, background copy layer. And let's put these all in a group. So come down to the group icon and click that. And now let's click group one on, because that's our flower edit in this group right here. So let's click it. So let's see the actual before. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now, I thought this image was really good out of camera. I didn't have to do a lot of things to it. I basically denoised it, sharpened it up, you know, just just caressed it, just played with it, and just enhanced it a little bit. And adding this little light up here, I thought really took this image over the top. I just love the gesture of this of these two flowers. It looks like they're embracing. And so there it is. So let's click this one more time, group one. There's our before and there's our after. And I think getting rid of this flower down there really helped. And I do like this portrait crop on here, eight by 10. And if I need to resize it for a larger print, I can use uh, Gigapixel AI to do that. So there it is. Well, we're finished. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you liked it, please like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, I always ask you, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. This way, every time I put out a new training tutorial, you'll be notified. Well, until next time, I'll see each and every one of you right here on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And until then, happy editing.